The Spirit is a fictional mask crime fighter created by cartoonist Will Eisner. He first appeared June 2, 1940 as the main feature of a 16-page, tabloid-sized, newsprint comic book insert distributed in the Sunday edition of Register and Tribune's syndicate newspapers. It was ultimately carried by 20 Sunday newspapers, with a combined circulation of 5 million copies during the 1940s. The Spirit section, as the insert was popularly known, continued until October 5, 1952. It generally included two other, four-page strips, plus filler material. Eastner was the editor, but also wrote and drew most in trees a euro after the first few months, he had the uncredited assistance of writer Jules Pfeiffer and artists Jack Cole and Wally Wood, though Eastner's singular vision for the character was a unifying factor. From the 1960s to 1980s, a handful of new Eastner spirit stories appeared in Harvey Comics and elsewhere, and Warren Publishing and Kitchen Sink Press variously reprinted the newspaper feature in black and white comics magazines and in color comic books. In the 1990s and 2000s, Kitchen Sink Press and DC Comics also published new spirit stories by other writers and artists. The Spirit chronicles the adventures of a masked vigilante who fights crime with the blessing of the city's police commissioner Dolan, an old friend. Despite the Spirit's origin as Detective Denny Colt, his real identity was virtually unmentioned again, and for all intents and purposes he was simply the Spirit. The stories are presented in a wide variety of styles, from straightforward crime drama and noir to light-hearted adventure, from mystery and horror to comedy and love stories, often with hybrid elements that twist to genre and reader expectations. Publication History, in late 1939, Everett M. Busy Arnold, publisher of the Quality Comics comic book line, began exploring an expansion into newspaper Sunday supplements, aware that many newspapers felt they had to compete with the suddenly burgeoning new medium of American comic books, as exemplified by the Chicago Tribune comic book, premiering two months before the Spirit section. Arnold compiled a presentation piece with existing Quality Comics material. An editor of the Washington Star liked George Brenner's comic book feature The Clock, but not Brenner's art, and was favorably disposed toward a Lou Fine strip. Arnold, concerned over the meticulous Fine's slowness and his ability to meet deadlines, claimed it was the work of Eisner, Fine's boss at the Eisner and Iger studio, from which Arnold bought his outsourced comics work. In late 39, just before Christmas time, Eisner recalled in 1979, Arnold came to me and said that the Sunday newspapers were looking for a way of getting into this comic book boom. In a 2004 interview, Eastner elaborated on that meeting. Busy invited me up for lunch one day and introduced me to sales manager of the Des Moines Register and Tribune syndicate Henry Martin, who said, the newspapers in this country, particularly the Sunday papers, are looking to compete with comics books, and they would like to get a comic book insert into the newspapers. Martin asked if I could do it. It meant that I'd have to leave Eastner and Iger, which was making money. We were very profitable at the time and things were going very well. A hard decision. Anyway, I agreed to do the Sunday comic book and we started discussing the deal, which was that we'd be partners in the comic book section, as they called it at that time. Eastner negotiated an agreement with the syndicate in which Arnold would copyright the spirit, but, written down in the contract I had with Busy Arnold a Euro, and this contract exists today as the basis for my copyright ownership a Euro Arnold agreed that it was my property. They agreed that if we had a split up in any way, the property would revert to me on that day that happened. My attorney went to Busy Arnold and his family, and they all signed a release agreeing that they would not pursue the question of ownership. This would include the eventual backup features, Mr. Mystic, and Lady Luck selling his share of their firm to Iger, who would continue to package comics as the SM Iger Studio and as Phoenix Features through 1955, for $20,000, Reesner left to create the spirit. They gave me an adult audience, Reesner said in 1997, and I wanted to write better things than superheroes. Comic books were a ghetto. I sold my part of the enterprise to my associate and then began the spirit. They wanted an heroic character a costumed character. They asked me if he'd have a costume. 
and I put a mask on him and said, yes, he has a costume. The character and the types of stories Eisner would tell, Eisner said in 1978, derived from his desire to do short stories. I always regarded comics as a legitimate medium, my medium. Creating a detective character would provide me with the most viable vehicle for the kind of stories I could best tell. The syndicate people weren't in full agreement with me. I, in my first discussion with Busy Arnold, his thinking centered around a superhero kind of character a Euro a costumed character. We didn't use the word superhero in those days. And I argued vehemently against it because I, had had my belly full of creating costumed heroes at Eisner and Ija. S. Oh actually one evening, around three in the morning, I was still working, trying to find Eta Euro I only had about a week and a half or two weeks in which to produce the first issue, the whole deal was done in quite a rush a Euro, and I came up with an outlaw hero, suitable, I felt, for an adult audience. The character's name, he said in that interview, came from Arnold, when Busy Arnold called, he suggested a kind of ghost or some kind of metaphysical character. He said, how about a thing called the ghost? And I said, no, that's not any good, and he said, well, then, call it the spirit. There's nothing like that around. I said, well, I don't know what you mean, and he said, well, you can figure that out a euro I just like the words the spirit. He was calling from a bar somewhere, I think. A, N, D actually, the more I thought about it the more I realized I didn't care about the name. The Spirit, an initially eight and later seven page urban crime fighter series, ran with the initial backup features Mr. Mystic and Lady Luck in a 16 page Sunday supplement that was eventually distributed in 20 newspapers with a combined circulation of as many as 5 million copies. It premiered June 2, 1940, and continued through 1952. Eisner was drafted into the U.S. Army in late 1941 and then had about another half year which the government gave me to clean up my affairs before going off to fight in World War II. In his absence, the newspaper syndicate used ghost writers and artists to continue the strip, including Manny Wade Wellman, William Woolfolk, and Lou Fine. Beesner's rumpled, masked hero and his gritty, detailed view of big city life both reflected and influenced the noir outlook of movies and fiction in the 1940s. Reesner said in 2001 that he created the strip as a vehicle to explore various genres, when I created the spirit, I never had any intention of creating a superhero. I never felt the spirit would dominate the feature. He served as a sort of an identity for the strip. The stories were what I was interested in in some episodes, the nominal hero makes a brief, almost incidental appearance while the story focuses on a real-life drama played out in streets, dilapidated tenements, and smoke-filled back rooms. Yet along with violence and pathos, the spirit lived on humor, both subtle and overt. He was machine-gunned, knocked silly, bruised, often amazed into near immobility and constantly confused by beautiful women. The feature ended with the October 5, 1952, edition. As the comics journal editor publisher Gary Grath wrote, by the late 40s, Beesner's participation in the strip had dwindled to a largely supervisory role. Beesner hired Jerry Grandinetti and Jim Dixon to occasionally ink his pencils. By 1950, Jules Pfeiffer was writing most of the strips, and Grandinetti, Dixon, and Al Wenzel were drawing them. A Euro Grandinetti penciling as a ghost artist, under Beesner's byline, said in 2005 that before the feature's demise, Beesner had tried everything had me penciling the spirit. Later on it was Wally Wood, who drew the final installments. Fictional character biography, the spirit, referred to in one newspaper article cited below as the only real middle-class crime fighter, was the hero persona of young detective Denny Colt. Presumed killed in the first three pages of the premiere story, Colt later revealed to his friend, Central City Police Commissioner Dolan, that he had in fact gone into suspended animation caused by one of Asheville and Dr. Cobra's experiments. When Colt awakened in Wildwood Cemetery, he established a base there and, using his newfound anonymity, began a life of fighting crime wearing only a small domino mask, blue business suit, red necktie, fedora hat, 
and gloves for a costume. The spirit dispensed justice with the aid of his assistant, Ebony White, funding his adventures with the rewards for capturing villains. The spirit originally was based in New York City, but this was quickly changed to the fictional Central City. Not tied to one locale, his adventures took him around the globe. He met eccentrics, cooks, and femme fatals, bringing his own form of justice to all of them. The story changed continually, but certain themes remained constant, the love between the spirit and Dolan's feisty proto-feminist daughter Ellen, the annual Christmas spirit stories, and the octopus. Ebony White Eastner was criticized for his depiction of Ebony White, the spirit's African-American sidekick. The character's name is a racial pun, and his facial features, including large white eyes and thick pinkish lips, are typical of racial blackface caricatures popular throughout the Jim Crow era. Eastner later admitted to consciously stereotyping the character, but said he tried to do so with responsibility, and argued that at the time humor consisted in our society of bad English and physical difference in identity. The character who was consistently treated with respect by the strip's fellow cast members, developed beyond the stereotype as the series progressed, and Eastner also introduced such African-American characters as the no-nonsense detective Gray who defied popular stereotypes. In a 1966 New York Herald Tribune feature by Eastner's former office manager turned journalist, Marilyn Mercer wrote, Ebony never drew criticism from Negro groups, perhaps because, Although his speech pattern was early minstrel show, he himself derived from another literary tradition, he was a combination of Tom Sawyer and Penrod, with a touch of Horatio Alda Hero, and color didn't really come into it. Other characters, the octopus is the archenemy of the spirit. He is a criminal mastermind and master of disguise who never shows his real face, though he is identified by his distinctive gloves. In the second issue of the 1960s Harvey comic Spirit comic book, his name is given as Isbath Zuck. The first name is a pun on Sitz Bath. Pal is a femme fatale who perennially tries to seduce the spirit to a life of crime at her side. She seduces and marries wealthy men who invariably die in mysterious ways, and uses their money to fund her crime empire in Istanbul and expand her influence and control over the underworld. After moving to Central City to find the spirit, she continues her modus operandi of selected marriages with the cream of society, even gaining an ally in the form of Sari, the young daughter of one of her deceased husbands. In the 2000s DC Comics version, Paul was once a young socialite in love with a doctor, working in third world countries, and turned to a life of crime when he was killed. San Sev is a childhood friend of Denny Colt, and knows he is the spirit. Working in espionage, she usually ends up on the opposite side of the law from him. She appears several times, always involved in some criminal scheme. Silken Floss is a nuclear physicist and a surgeon, who acts as the accomplice to the octopus. Dr. Cobra is a mad scientist whose chemicals and machinations inadvertently help Denny Colt become the spirit. Mr. Carrion is a morbid con man with a pet vulture, Julia. Darling O'Shea is the richest and most spoiled child in the world. Hazel Pete Macbeth is a witch with a Shakespearean motif and apparent magical powers. Lorelei Rocks, an apparent siren, appeared in a September 1948 strip and subsequently in 2000's DC comic Spirit Stories. Silk Satin is a tall, statuesque brunette with a white streak in her hair originally an adventurous who later reformed and worked as an international troubleshooter for the insurance company Croids of Glasgow. In later stories, it is revealed she is a daughter, Hildy, who motivates her to stay on the straight path. In the 2000s DC Comics revival, she is a smaller, more slender, blonde CIA agent. The spirit in John Law, several spirit stories, such as the first appearance of Sansef, were retooled from a failed publishing venture featuring an eye-patched, pipe-smoking detective named John Law. Law and his shoeshine boy sidekick, Nubbin, starred in several adventures planned for a new comic series. These completed adventures were eventually adapted into spirit stories, with John Law's eye-patch being changed to the spirit's mask, and Nubbin redrawn as Willem Wafe or other spirit-supporting characters.
the original John Law stories were restored and published in Willisner's John Law, Dead Man Walking, a collection of stories that also features new adventures by writer-artist Gary Chawliner, starring John Law, Nubbin, and other Eastner creations, including Lady Luck and Mr. Mystic. Assistants and collaborators, like most artists working in newspaper comic strips, Eastner after a time employed a studio of assistants who, on any given week's story, might draw or simply ink backgrounds, ink parts of Eastner's main characters, or as eventually occurred, ghost draw the strip entirely. Eastner also eventually used ghostwriters, generally in collaboration with him. Jules Pfeiffer, who began as an art assistant circa 1946 and later became the primary writer through the strip's end in 1952, recalled, When I first worked for Will there was John Spranger, who was his penciler and a wonderful draftsman. Better than Will. There was Sam Rosen, the lettering man. Jerry Grandinetti came a little after me and did backgrounds, and Jerry had some architectural background. His drawing was stiff but loosened up after a while, but he drew backgrounds and inked them beautifully. And Abe Connexon, who was my best friend in the office, was a jack of all trades but mostly did lettering and backgrounds after Jerry left. Abe was a mentor to me. Beesner's studio also included art assistants Bob Powell, Dave Berg, Tex Blanisdell, Frederick Kierda, Alexander Costa, K.K.A. Alex Costa, Jack Cole, Jack Keller, Jules Pfeiffer, Manny Stallman, Andre LeBlanc, Al Wenzel, Inkers, Alex Kotsky, John Belfi, Don Kimasaro, Robin King, Joe Kibbert, Jerry Grandinetti, Jim Dixon, Don Perlin, Letterers, Martin Demuth, Abe Connexon, Sam Schwartz, Ben Oda, Colorists, Jules Pfeiffer, Chris Christiansen, Ghost Artists, Lou Fine and Jack Cole, Jerry Grandinetti, Wally Wood, Ghostwriters Writing Assistants, Tony Bloom, Jack Cole, Manny Wade Wellman and William Woolfolk, Klaus Nordling, Marilyn Mercer, Abe Connexon, Jules Pfeiffer. Latter day Spirit Comics. Equals 1960s equals. A five page spirit story, set in New York City, appeared as part of a January 9, 1966 article about the spirit in the New York Herald Tribune. Harvey Comics reprinted several spirit stories in two giant size, 25 cent comic books published October 1966 and March 1967, each with new Eastner covers. The first of these two 60 page issues opened with a new seven page retelling of the spirit's origin by writer Pencil Oinka Eastner. Also new was the text feature an interview with the spirit, credited to Marilyn Mercer. And writer artist Eastner's two page featurette Spirit Lab, Invincible Devices. 7 1948 Euro 1949 spirit stories were reprinted. The second issue opened with a new seven page story by writer artist Eastner. Octopus, the life story of the King of Crime, giving the heretofore unrevealed origin of the spirit's nemesis the octopus, as well as his given name. Also new was the two-page text feature The Spirit Answers Your Mail, and writer-artist Eastner's two-page feature at The Spirit Lab, The Man from MSD. Reprinted were 7 1948 Euro 50 spirit stories. Equals 1970s equals Warren Publishing and later Dennis Kitchen's Kitchen Sink Press published extensive reprints, first as large black and white magazines, then as trade paperbacks. The magazines often featured new Eastner covers. Two new stories were written during this period The Capistrano Jewels, a four page story published in the second issue of the Kitchen Sink reprints in 1972, and The Invader, a five page story. Issue 30 of the Kitchen Sink series features the Spirit Jam, with a script from Eastner and a few pencil pages, plus contributions from 50 artists. In 1976, an oddity called The Spirit Casebook of True Haunted Houses and Ghosts was published. The Spirit plays the EC host, introducing true stories of haunted houses. The Spirit makes a cameo in Vampirella No. 50. Equals 1980s equals Kitchen Sink Press did a complete reprinting of the post-WWY Eisner work in a color comic series. The publishers started another series intended to reprint the stories from the beginning. It lasted only 10 issues. Equals 1990s and beyond equals. 
Kitchen Sink also published a series of original spirit stories in 1996 a Euro 1997, including contributions from Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons, Paul Chadwick, Neil Gaiman, Joe R. Lansdale and Paul Pope. In the mid-2000s, DC Comics began reprinting the spirit chronologically in the company's hardcover archive series, in an approximately 8x 10-inch format, smaller than the Kitchen Sink and Warren publications. The final spirit art by the late Eastner appeared in the sixth issue of The Amazing Adventures of the Escapist, from Dark Horse Comics. Equals DC Comics equals. The DC Comics one-shot Batman The Spirit, by writer Jeff Loeb and artists Darwin Cook and Jay Bone introduced the spirit into the DC Universe. The first issue of the ongoing series The Spirit, written and penciled by Cook and inked by Jay Bone, debuted the following month. It ran through issue number 32, with most running a single 22-page story. The series updated some concepts, with Ellen's internet skills helping to solve a case, and Ebony White stripped of his racial stereotype characteristics. The team of Mark Evania and Sergio Aragons became the series' regular writers beginning with issue number 14, with Mike Plug and later Paul Smith providing the artwork. Equals IDW equals, in 2013, IDW published a four-issue miniseries, The Rocketeer and the Spirit, Pulp Friction, using the Spirit, Dolan, Ellen, and the Octopus as well as characters from Dave Stevens's The Rocketeer series. The four issues were collected in a hardcover graphic novel. Equals Dynamite Entertainment equals, in 2015, Dynamite Entertainment obtained the rights to publish new Spirit comics, beginning with a story by writer-artist Matt Wagner, who killed the spirit. In other media. Equals Daily Strip equals, from October 1941 to March 1944, there was also a daily, black-and-white newspaper strip of the spirit. These were later reprinted in several collections. DC's The Spirit Archives Vol. 25 collected all these strips. Reprints of The Spirit's adventures ran in quality comics and fiction house publications shortly after their newspaper debuts. Equals TV movie equals, the character was the subject of a 1987 television movie starring Sam J. Jones as The Spirit, Nana Visitor as Ellen Dolan, and Gary Wahlberg as Commissioner Dolan. A film served as a pilot for a planned TV series. Equals film equals. The film adaptation The Spirit, written and directed by Frank Miller, was released in theaters by Lionsgate on December 25, 2008. The film stars Gabriel Macht as the spirit and Samuel L. Jackson as the octopus. Equals radio equals, Dennis Kitchen, the Eastner Estates agent, said in a July 8, 2006 online interview that a radio series had been in development, it was pitched to the estate by a couple of producers, one of whom is very experienced with NPR, so we have been back and forth on how that would work. Again, it would be premature to tell you it is going to happen but it is in serious discussion. Collected editions, the comic strips and comics have been collected into a number of volumes, Will Eastner Color Treasury, Spirit Color Album, Spirit Color Album, V2, Spirit Color Album, V3, Art of Will Eastner, Outer Space Spirit, Christmas Spirit, Spirit Casebook, All About Paul, Spirit Casebook 2, The Spirit Archives, Volume 1 through Volume 26. The Best of the Spirit, the Spirit Book 1, collects Batman the Spirit and the Spirit No. 1 a Euro 6, The Spirit Book 2, collects the Spirit No. 7 a Euro 13, The Spirit Book 3, collects the Spirit No. 14 a Euro 20, The Spirit Book 4, collects the Spirit No. 21 a Euro 25, The Spirit Book 5, collects the Spirit No. 26 a Euro 32, The Spirit, Angel Smirty, collects the Spirit No. 1 a Euro 7. Notes. References. Will Eastner Official Site, Grand Comics Database, Transcript, Eastner's Keynote Address at the 2002 University of Florida Conference on Comics and Graphic Novels Will Eastner Symposium, Jack Kirby Collector No. 16, Will Eastner Interview, Archive of Hanges, Tom. Will Eastner's The Spirit, AdventureStrips.com. Reprinted from The Spirit, The Origin Years No. 1 A Euro 4. Original page Original page. The New York Times Syndicate Obituary, by Sarah Boxer, 
the Comics Journal No. 267, excerpt, Will Eisner, having something to say. External links, The Spirit at DMOZ, The Spirit at the Comic Book DB, The Spirit at the Internet Movie Database, Jamuka, Wednesday, ed. Wildwood Cemetery, The Spirit Database. Web Citation Archive. Further reading, Andelman, Bob. Will Eisner, A Spirited Life. ISBN 1-59582-011-6. Pfeiffer, Jules. The Great Comic Book Heroes. ISBN 1-56097-501-6. Jones, Gerard. Men of Tomorrow. ISBN 0-434-01402-8. Stranko, Jim. The Steranko History of Comics 2. Super Graphics.